Hello, my angels, my loves. We've got a fresh batch of makeup that came in PR and stuff that I bought. Yes, I do have some stuff that I bought also. And I'm gonna just smack it all in my face today. It's gonna be a trying new makeup video. And I took questions from y'all on my Instagram that I'm sure are going to be incredible. Y'all, let me walk you through what we're going to be playing with today. We have the new Bare Minerals Foundation. This is the Skin Perfecting Matte Liquid Foundation. Is this a reformulation? I do not know, but I liked the Bare Pro before and I think I'll probably like this this time too. I also bought the Fenty Concealer. This is in the shade 120N and I have used it and I have some thoughts already, but I'm hoping that it goes better than it did the first time. I also picked up a product that I'm really hoping begins to make sense to me. This is the new Fluid Sheer Glow Enhancer from Armani Beauty. I really don't wanna think that Armani's lost the plot. I want to make this make sense so badly, so today we're going to make a genuine effort to do so, but you're going to see the results in real time. Curiosity got the best of me, and I bought the Prada Lip Balm. The bullet itself is green. We'll start by prepping my skin with this, and I'll give you all my thoughts on it so far. We also have the new eyeshadows from Make Beauty. This is just going to be like basically an all new face of makeup. I don't usually do this, but I feel like, I don't know, it's enough like disparate things that it can still see scientific, right? Anyway, these are all multi-chromes and they are called the, yeah, Multi-Chromatic Metal Reflecting Eyeshadow. And I have all of them because I Make Beauty, I love y'all. And also, speaking of things that I got all of, <sighs> Hourglass sent me all of their lip products, I think, like pretty much all of them, right? Like that's a lot. So we'll be trying something out of here for my lips today, some combination. I have no idea how this is going to go. It's just gonna be an adventure, we're on it together. And for blush, I think we're just gonna start using my Riding Ferdinand collection since I finally shared it with y'all. It will be out by the time this video comes out, so I don't know if it has sold out or what. <laughs> I just, I'm past khaki, I don't know. Dev future khaki, where are we at? It went much smoother than last time. There are still the two lightest shades of the blushes left, but y'all sold almost everything out, so thank you so much. Anyway, grateful for y'all. However, it turned out just eternally grateful and we'll be putting some of these on my face as well. I should reiterate, I have no plan other than to entertain you and put makeup on my face. So let's go ahead and jump in. I can tell I'm about to start my period because I have just bumped into everything today. I cut my knuckle on the inside of my kitchen cabinets. I just bumped my knee in this room. I also scraped my hand on the inside of my bathroom cabinet and I'm just generally klutzy today. I just need to like sit still. So, yeah. I want to prep my skin because yikes, just like broad gesture yikes. I don't know where my dewy primer is. I'm just going to start in with some Fix Plus Magic Radiance because it's going to give my skin a little bit of moisture. It's got some stuff in it. It's got vitamin C, all day hydration, the vitamins, right? Okay. So Fair Minerals sent me in their Bare Pro, Fair 10 Neutral, Fair 15 Neutral, and Fair 10 Warm. So. I will go ahead and swatch those on my cheek. I will tell you it is Fair 15 Neutral. I believe that is my best match here. Here is the component. It's glass, it's cute. And like I said, I have used at least whatever the previous version of this was and I remember really liking it. I bought it because, I think because of Shelby Wilson. Don't quote me on that, but I think she was the one who had it and liked it and so I bought it. See, that's not bad the warm one. So that is 10 warm, but like 10, I think is too light once it gets spread out. Then we have 15 neutral, which is what I wore yesterday. It was a great match. And I actually thought that this was going to be a really good match. 10 neutral, fair 10 neutral, but it is super, super light. Doesn't it seem like this one is going to be a better match? The warm one, this one, I still think it's going to be too light. Hmm, let's see. Let's see what happens. I mean, worst case scenario, we wipe it off, right? Boop, 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 boop. Let's look at questions. Tom bursts into your house and yells, come quick, there's no time to explain. Why? <laughs> well, first of all, Tom is probably the least likely to do something like that because their chart is like entirely Scorpio and Capricorn, which are just two signs that don't like to do things spontaneously. And so it would have to be something really special. Okay, okay. 
It, but it's 10 is the problem. It's not the undertone. Yeah, it's the fact that it's too light. It's just too light. So the thing that I noticed about this foundation, and I think it's something worth bearing in mind when you're getting a shade match for it, if you do end up deciding that you want it, is that because I think of the sunscreen ingredients in the formula, it gets lighter on the skin than it swatches, which is a little bit weird. So just something to be aware of. So we're gonna go with 15 neutral, which is what I had before. So look at that, it looks like it's gonna be too dark. And I swear as you spread it out, it's like the titanium dioxide or the zinc oxide or whatever. What is it that's in here? Zinc oxide, it does. It starts to like be whiter <laughs> than it looked when you see, like it blends right in. Isn't that weird? My eyes aren't fooling me, right? Y'all saw that. So let's see. I know that Tom had a dream one time that I called them and forget like what the actual scenario was, why we ended up in New York City together, but it was like the first thing was we have to go to the Chanel Atelier. I mean, it would probably be something on that level of urgency. It would be like khaki, no time to explain, there's free Chanel. <laughs> And they would be taking me someplace where there was free Chanel. Because we share such a mutual interest in luxury beauty, like absurdly luxurious beauty. It would be something like that. I mean, I would like to think that Tom would take me someplace really chaotic, but truth be told, I am the chaos and Tom is the order in the relationship, which is, I know, like if you've watched our podcast, maybe a surprising thing, but like Tom is the balance to my chaos. Tom is the person who's always like, yeah, I know that, that you said that and you're really shooting from the hip, but like, have you thought about it these other six ways? And I'm like, you're actually, you're actually very wise there, Tom. Tom keeps me out of trouble. So the area of it all. I tend to be impulsive and Tom keeps me grounded. Okay, so like I said, you can really see under the lights the way that something with mineral SPF does reflect light. And that's why they always say like, don't use this for an event or whatever. I think that if you like powder it and stuff and you test it, you'll probably be fine. You won't get too much flashback, but I don't know. I probably wouldn't recommend something like this for like your wedding day. Even though it's like really beautiful and full coverage, it's kind of more of an everyday foundation. But the finish is quite lovely. I like it very muchly. And I'm kind of glad I didn't use a dewy primer because I think it would have kind of altered the results a little bit. This is still giving matte, but it's like a really pretty skin finish. Like I said, the third time. I did like the Bear Pro before because it's not wild in terms of mattification. It's just a pretty satin finish. And I feel like it's pretty agreeable to my dry skin. And this seems to be either just as good or an improvement on that. So it's kind of like a satin foundation for dry skinned people because I have definitely come across a lot of foundations that claim to be that. Terracotta Lata from Guerlain, I'm looking at you. And it, they just didn't. Okay, so that's nice. I am gonna turn the light down because now I feel like I'm reflective. Like I keep looking at my monitor. That's a good chance to look though at the match. The match is really, really good. All righty. We're going to use the Fenty Weird Even Hydrating Longwear Concealer. I want to like this so much. I want to like this because it is claiming to be hydrating and because just on the principle of the fact that I really love the new Ease Drop stick. It's so good. And I just want this to be like that. But y'all, the way that this wore yesterday, it was not good. I need to check the ingredients and see if I'm applying something water-based with something like oil-based or silicone-based. And maybe that was why, or maybe it was the powder that I used. I used a different powder than I usually do yesterday because it started to break up in a way underneath my eyes and around my mouth that looked almost like two products repelling one another. So that might be my fault. Oh, this is it. It hurts, don't it? Okay, let's take another question while I end. <laughs> Favorite things to eat slash drink while crying. Hi, hey, Rebecca. <laughs> so I don't think that there's anything wrong with admitting the fact that sometimes I fall into the habit of crying a lot, okay? And it's just the way that it is. And it's been the nature of winter for me. And honestly, just the way winter seems to affect me in general is that I just get really bummed out and depressed and I hate it. And so the funny thing is like in my mind, I was always really opposed to crying while eating. I always felt like crying while eating is one of the most pathetic things you can do. <laughs> Even since I was a kid, like when I was upset and I'd be like eating a slice of pizza upset, I'm like, this is just like the worst two things I could be doing together at the same time. So like, I will say I really above all try to avoid eating while actually crying. There's just something so demoralizing about it. But Rebecca and I have in common a few emergency foods that we lean on when we are not feeling our best. They're these riddles three. 
One, candy cane kisses if you can locate them any time of year, Hershey's candy cane kisses. You can't be sad while you're eating one. Emergency chicken. This is when your body <laughs> has not been fed in too long and you realize in order to survive I need protein and I need it now. And it's usually a frozen chicken finger of some persuasion and you just make a lot of them and over Thanksgiving we ate them in a hot tub and we called them hot tub chicken. We had hot tub chicken, we had hot tub pizza, we had hot tub whatever those adorable Italian donuts are. Like we just hot dog margaritas, we had a fantastic time. And then finally I have a visual aid for the last one. Annie's organic cheddar cheesy smiles. <laughs> Ah, I love these little guys. <laughs> They're probably stale. Nope. Yeah, kind of. They go stale in like four seconds. So you actually have to eat the whole bag in one sitting. It's just a lot. Otherwise, they'll call the police on you. And they're basically organic cheese puffs, which forgives you for eating an entire bag of cheese puffs because they're organic. I'm just kidding. I also have Cheetos in my cabinet. I'm not that discerning. But those are the emergency sadness food groups. Cheddar cheese puffs, emergency chicken, and uh, Hershey's candy cane kisses. I forgot to prep my lips the way that I said I was going to. And honestly, I think it's because my brain is avoiding it. <laughs> Y'all. I didn't think they were gonna put the Prada scent in this. I don't know why. And I honestly didn't think it was gonna be that bad, but it's so bad. It's so bad. I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna complain the whole time. So first of all, it's matte. Like it's not doing anything actually for my lips. Like it's not giving glossiness. It's not giving balminess. It's not giving nourishment. And that's what that looks like. You know, obviously the green doesn't do anything, but I am really into the green on the inside of the cap. So I just think that it's a nice touch. But as much as I want to like this, it's like as strong or stronger than the scent in a Gucci lipstick that just, you taste, you just taste it. And even Gucci had the common sense to put out a lip balm in that gorgeous packaging that I paid $55 for to not have a flavor in their balm. It's just a balm. Is it the best balm in the world? No, but that's counterbalanced by the fact that I want to interact with that packaging constantly. So I'm going to use it up and buy it again. I don't care. It's certainly not as good as like a pot would be of like a glossierbalm.com, but like what is? Not even current glossierbalm.com is as good as that. So all that to say, I would much rather pay $55 for the Gucci lip balm than this. And I might return this. Like it's just that difficult to wear. And like, I just used up the last of my YSL candy glaze and I would rather put that money towards a candy glaze. The candy glaze has a scent. It smells fruity, but you don't taste it. I don't know. It's just like, it's so freaking perfumey. It's so perfumey and the look of it is not good. There's nothing good about it. It's not like, doing anything for me. Like if, if it does anything, it's giving my lips a sickly pale green haze. I don't know who asked for that. Not me, not me. So I have thus far tried to apply this with a sponge. This is the Fluid Sheer Glow Enhanced from Giorgio Armani. I got it in this like bright pinky shade. I thought it looked a lot more coral online, but it is indeed pink with like a gold shimmer in it. I bought that because I was like, I want color to it. I want it to kind of behave maybe like the Surratt Sheer Blushes. Those things are off the charts. They're incredible. I'm gonna apply it with a brush today and see if I can get better results from it because maybe the sponge is just soaking it up when I do it because all it really wants to do is take my makeup back off. And I really want to make it work because it looks like it could be a cool new kind of product. And I'm always here for that. But like, so far I am confounded. I want to use the BK109. It's like a smaller, slightly less dense version of their cream blush brush. So I'm hoping it works better with a liquid. And I want to show y'all what this looks like. So first of all, when you get it, like the way that the gold tends to be dispersed in the images, it's kind of all living at the top for some reason. So I'm like, come on, buddy. I don't know if that really matters that much. And the thing is, it's really beautiful when you do that number. And I'm kind of hoping, you know, oh, it's gonna be like the NARS, even though the NARS was like an R NARS kind of situation because it just went away. I'm like, oh, that's so nice. Wait a second. Oh, that is so nice. Okay, that's so much better. Oh my God, brush. This formula is going to be soaked up by a sponge. Oh my God, the brush is so much better. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. I thought that this was gonna be just a total dud. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm not gonna say it's not taking my makeup off. It kind of still is, but at least I'm getting pigment out of it. Yeah, me I wanna say that like maybe that's not the way you're supposed to use it, but at the same time, like any place that I put it, it's gonna do what it's doing right now, which is like kind of particulating my makeup a little bit. Oh no, I don't know. 
Does it have a smell? Maybe. I feel like I can smell the product and a slight scent, so I don't know. I'm gonna let that like set down, but yeah. Okay, wait a second. Like, I feel like you could blame that on me, but I feel like there's no way to get it to like blend and like actually feather at the edges in a way that isn't just so noticeable. <sighs> I was really excited because I was actually getting color out of it but maybe my Finding Ferdinand ones will save it because that is just not, it's just not it. Like from far away, it kind of is, but like that's not going to make me recommend that you go out and buy it. And it's not an inexpensive product. So I'm gonna let that just stay there for now because from afar, it looks fine. I'm not even gonna bronze yet. So we're gonna move into the eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch. Oh, I forgot, I also got this. Ooh, this is the Sephora Collection Contour they just came out with, and this is 01 Fair to Light. I mean, look at that. She is gray. This is not for the faint of heart, but I am going to use this today to demonstrate. Contour can be really fantastic and effective, but like you have to have the right formula and the right tools and the right hand. So either way, we will be putting that on. Let me swatch all of these new make multi chromatic metal reflecting eyeshadows. They are again in replaceable pans, which we love to see like just a really, really beautiful package. So there are six of these and they actually came with brushes. So maybe I will try it with their brushes and see how they work. The brushes tend to be really weighted, so it's just lovely to interact with them. So we'll see if that's the case. So here we have, I, I put them in order, so I'll be looking down here. Uh, the first one is Blaze, and then we have Stardust, Onyx, Purple Haze, Quartz, and Glaze. Quartz, Glaze, and Blaze are probably going to be my colors. So we're just going to grab those because I want to show y'all what this does, and I don't want turquoise, blue, or purple on my eyeballs today. I just want to keep this on the Rails as much as I can because there's a lot of new stuff happening too many moving parts for that but that's how they look aren't they pretty they're really lovely when you feel them they kind of remind me a little bit of the shimmers in the stoned vibes palette from urban decay and that's a compliment coming from me I loved those like they kind of have that same appearance to them but they're not as flaky they're a little bit more consistent, but the colors, everything about them like reminds me, it's like very satisfying. They're not quite as multi-chromatic as those were. In fact, I wouldn't, I would argue that these aren't really multi-chromatic. They're just really pretty foils, but they're not multi-chromes, which is good by the way. I mean, sure it's a misnomer, but like if anybody here has watched me work with a multi-chrome like from Cleona, it's like the fastest way to make my brain overheat because like it completely confuses all of my color theory knowledge and I just can't compute it. So I'm glad that they're like distinct colors. <laughs> okay, we have two brushes. We have the Precision Eye Smudger and the All Over Eyeshadow Brush. So let's give those a whirl. In my experience with these so far, I have found that they actually do spread in a nice way with a brush that doesn't come off super, super shimmery. So you can get away with using them in the crease, depending on which one you choose. I mean, I, I personally am that person who like wants to see more light absorption in the crease. I like to kind of obey those rules personally, just because color theory, it's just what pleases my eye. But you know, you do what you want. So I'm going to start with Blaze on the all over brush here. See if it'll pick up and it does. It does. I'm very afraid of fallout though. Like it does feel a little bit unstable doing it that way, but that might just be my imagination. So you can see Blaze is a beautiful pinky copper. And that's actually, it's a really big brush, but it's very effective. I'm not gonna say obviously like I'm getting the most control out of it, but it's pretty, right? Yeah, it's a little bit huge. You know what I mean? It's just a little bit huge to try and do the kind of look that I would do. Like I just want a little bit more than that. Let's try the little smudger brush and do that underneath. What's interesting is that like, I feel like as soon as I put my finger in there and pulled off the top layer, you actually end up seeing less flaky eyeshadow underneath. It's almost like it's a cream chrome, a cream chrome under there. And like that's more what the actual consistency of the product is. And the flakiness is actually just a spray over 
And I don't have a problem with that. I just wanna be honest with you, you know? That's a nice little brush. And yes, these have super weighted handles. They're very satisfying to hold. So there's that. I am going to go ahead and say that like, these brushes are a little bit outside my comfort zone. I am gonna use this same one though to use glaze and yeah it's the same situation where you see that the shadow underneath the i think just like the top layer is like a different consistency it's not as flaky but make beauty has always impressed me with their innovation i feel like this is very much what i expect from them in terms of making something that is a product that we recognize but it's still not entirely familiar like that's what they do really well they kind of improve on our expectations on a product like this i think that it kind of is trying to remind me of like a victoria beckham lid luster which is a high compliment the colors aren't really i don't know i don't think that the victoria beckham colors are that well thought out to be honest like, like, I don't understand why there isn't like a really good bedroomized brown and like a really good bedroomized Bambi in that collection. And it was like honestly really a long time before they even came out with a good green. I also think that these colors leave a little bit to be desired. Like again, I would have done a brown and then instead we have just kind of this pewter color. So I'm gonna use that like in the crease. I'm using that on a 14 from Refer. And you can see like it picks up well enough on a brush and it's not totally, totally like overwhelmingly shiny. And so you can still spread it out and get the effect of a crease shade, a shadow, without, I don't know, it being distorted by light reflection. So my urge is to put this on with my fingers. Like that's where my, my brain is at. So I'm gonna go back in with glaze. And like, you see how that just wants to, I just feel like it's meant to be put on with your fingers. That's just what it wants to do. And that's going to give us this bright, beautiful lid and drama, you know, some drama. <laughs> Applying it with a brush is fine, but it just doesn't feel like the most exciting use of what is a pretty exciting formula. I'm taking a brush that doesn't have anything on it and I'm just using that to blur the edges. I really don't feel like I need to apply more <laughs> of any of these eyeshadows right now. If anything, I'm going to use the Sephora Collection Contour to finish out the crease because I do want to really like unify the look and I want this to be soft. I don't want it to be like, you know, Cleopatra eyes, not today. And they, they do really like move around in a nice way. They do soften. And I guess I could have pulled out like their eyeshadow sticks. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll pull out their eyeshadow sticks. Hang on, let's do that. Yeah, I think what I was looking for was just a good, either cool or neutral brown. The shade Umber, I think is gonna be just right for this. Just work that onto the outer corner and spread it out with a little brush. I think that'll do it. I'm using a Singe Beauty E06 for this. Yeah, I really liked these little eyeshadow sticks from them. They came out among a few other eyeshadow stick releases last year. They were just one of those kinds of products that like everyone decided to have all at once, even though a lot of brands had already had them for years and years. But like Rare Beauty put out their first ones last year. Victoria Beckham Beauty put out their first ones, I think last year. And like I fell head over heels in love with them and then Make Beauty did. And I feel like people were kind of up in arms because there wasn't enough product in there. And like, I hear you. And then also they kind of broke a little bit. A lot of mine broke when I first opened them, but they're still a beautiful formula. I wish that they would just kind of like like make the sticks a little bit chunkier in the next iteration because I think that would solve both problems. A little more in the package and a little bit less fragile. I kind of really dig that, right? I mean, it's shimmery and that's risky because you know, it can make your eyes look crepier than they are and things like that. But like, I don't think it's bad. I think it looks pretty cool. It feels really secure. It definitely grips. It doesn't feel like some of like the Asian beauty eyeshadows where it's gonna just like faff away, you know? These definitely feel like they've got longevity to them. And I wore this yesterday and it did. It proved to have longevity. So let's go in with the Sephora contour. This is definitely, again, like a gray that is not for the faint of heart, but look how low pigment it is. You know, I have to really get in there to get a swatch and I think that that's the key, that's the advantage. So I have here, I had here, where is it? Ah uh, yes, I'm working with the A507 from Angie Had Flashy by BK and we're just gonna dippity dab, boop boop. This is very, very different from my Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow, as you can see, like that's gray. And if you're looking for it, yeah, it's gonna look a little bit gray, but used wisely, a contour can be so believable in terms of an illusion. It just has to be paired with the right things 
and used deftly. And it also just has to be the right formula. And I do really like this formula because it's super, like I said, it's low pigment. So it's not gonna get you in as much trouble as quickly as something like that Milk Makeup Cream Stick that is just so over pigmented for its coolness. It's like you can't get the gray stripe off your face. You just can't blend it. You like can't. This I feel like blends really well. I will touch a little bit of it into the crease just to maybe like set the cream shadow a little bit. Nice. Okay. Huh. That eye look is pretty great. I mean, it's a lot, but it's pretty great. <sighs> okay, we need to bronze my cheeks and then I'm going to go in with some of my Finding Ferdinand blushes and like pull this together. Let's take a question while we're at it. Okay, what is your favorite drinkware to drink out of? This is a great question because I am constantly talking to my friends about my glassware kink. Okay, follow me on this. And you know what? I think some of you just felt heard and seen, okay? And if that's the case, please comment down below. Let me know if as soon as I said glassware kink, you went finally someone else. Because my sister and I are the only ones I know of. I'm using my Hermes, by the way. It's really just gonna pull it all together. My sister and I are the only ones I know who have this glassware kink and it extends to light fixtures as well. So it's like blown glass really of any kind, but mostly light fixtures and things that we drink out of. And I'm very particular. Like there are things that give me a boner and things that don't. The worst thing out there on the market to drink out of as far as I'm concerned is a pint glass. Do not bring me a cocktail in a pint glass. I don't care if I'm at a Fuddruckers. Do not bring me a cocktail in a pint glass. It's insulting. And also those catering wine glasses, Libby catering wine glasses that have those thick lips on them. It's like you could just chuck them at someone across the room and they wouldn't break. No, do not insult me with that. I want the thinnest lip available. I want it to barely even exist as I'm drinking my wine out of it. It's barely a bubble of a vessel. I want the crispest lip ever. And that gives me a glassware boner. And there are other things, I'm gonna also use my Gucci bronzer, there are other things that annoy me. Okay, so one thing is, and I know that this is very anti, I don't know, like the European cool way or whatever, but like, I don't wanna drink my wine out of a juice glass. Okay, maybe, I mean, I get it in like Italy, but the wine isn't that expensive, but it's like if I'm in the US and they're trying to be all Euro and they bring me like an $18 glass of wine in a juice glass, get out. You can choke, like no. <laughs> Bring it to me in a wine glass like an adult, okay? I paid for this glass of wine and I am 36, almost 37 years old. Bring me a wine glass, thank you very much. How did you know I had such strong opinions on this? This might be someone who listens to the podcast. Okay, my under eyes look bananas. okay? Arples and bananas. Like, I'm not McLoving it, and I need to pull in my Victoria Beckham bronzer so that I can then go in with blush on top. Like, the Armani blush just gave me, like, major sockets, and I think it's that, and maybe the Fenty is slightly, ever so slightly too light, so. Love this brush. This is the Nikki L.A. Rose BK collab and 15. That sounded like I have no idea what I'm talking about. I was just reading. I'm sorry. I have too much on my mind, but I'm using this to kind of nah, apparently stab myself in the eye, but I'm using it to kind of bridge the gap. Oh my God. I saw this, you know, there, I forget her name, but she's got a skincare company and they sent some of it to me. It's like pillow talk. I think is the pillow. Something is the actual brand. And she's, she always starts off. She's like, I'm 39 and I'm a board certified dermatologist. And she's really adorable, but like her stuff can be a little bit kind of, it's exaggerated because it's, she's, you know, coming from TikTok and she has to kind of like, you know, burst through the noise. But she was showing this image today of a woman who didn't wash her mascara off and it made little dots on the inside of her eyelids. Ah! It made me want to sterilize my life. Made me want to peel my eyelids back and brush them with a toothbrush. It was so disgusting. I was like, if ever, because I honestly, I was talking to my friend last night and I was like, on my drunkest night, on my drunkest night in all of khaki lore, I have never gone to bed without washing my face and I have never gone to bed without brushing my teeth, okay? I wash my makeup off, I practice dental hygiene. Absolutely, that's just never been, never been even a question to me. It was just even like cross-eyed, too many beers, I'm just like, no, no, I'm not always here. I'm gonna get an eye infection and then I won't be able to work tomorrow and that's, you know. So that still scared the living bejeebies out of me 
let's play with some of my blushes before I break and do my eyeliner and my brows and stuff. But I'm liking this. I'm liking how it's turning out. So I think that this calls for, yeah. So this is Sunrise, this is the lightest one, and it just, it's so fair. Like it's just got this beautiful, like barely there kind of mauveness to it. And that's the feeling that I'm chasing today. And we're gonna use the 109, which is what I used for the liquid blush. And we're going to, oh, we're going to hope for the best. Oh my God, look at it, look at it. So I did mention, oh my God, that the formula has changed ever so slightly. My friend Steph of the account Beauty Unhyped over on Instagram, she's like, I love it because she has slightly oilier skin and she loves that it's a little bit more stable. Like she loved the old formula too, but it just helps with the longevity. And oh my God, she has an olive complexion and it was the first time that I got to see someone that like not sitting right in front of me, like somebody using it on their own in their own house, whatever. Someone with an olive complexion use Just Chilled, which is the adjuster that's like quite blue. You know, it's very unabashedly cool. Oh my God, y'all. <laughs> The effect, just go go follow her, but the effect that it has on olive skin is bananas. It's off the charts. And you know what? Because we have this like very cool toned thing happening in the crease. Yes, I think we're gonna go in with Chilled, which is the, like I said, the kind of bluish adjuster. I mean, it's not, in my color theory mind, it's bluish. It's very cool purple. I'm gonna use this one right here. I think this is what Linda used also. Glitter Fallout, she was the first one to get a review out of the blushes when they came out. This is the Singe Beauty F06. And it's very similar to the 112 from BK. So I'm going to use what she used because it looked like it worked really well for her. Yeah, you see that? You see how it kind of adds that nice coolness? Look at the difference between that side and that side. See? Ooh, it just adds this really beautiful kind of berry intensity. Ugh, and it really pulls it in from the eye look. But it's still like, I think that what it really does is it makes it look like you got wind chapped, which is the whole point. Like you put it on kind of the tops of your cheeks and on your nose, and it immediately looks like you've actually been out in the sun on the mountain, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna do my eyeliner, my mascara, my brows, and we will come back and talk about lips. So it's just to like blend everything together. I'm gonna go in with that same Nikki Rose brush. And then we'll open up the hourglass. Okay, let's open up the hourglass. Okay, get the Prada off of here. Y'all, my lips feel drier than they did before I put the Prada on. The fragrance didn't bother me as much this time. Still, it's just, look at that. It did nothing good for my lips. So here we are, this is Expose. Ooh. Ooh, it's like my lip color, truly. Huh. How nice, look at that. Wow, it is like almost exactly my lip color. Like I could lip cheat with this. This is awesome. I don't even feel like I need to blend it. And then we're gonna go in with this matte here. We'll see. They smell nice, kind of vanilla. Hmm, are my lips in good enough shape for a matte lip right now? Wow, that is a really grippy matte lip. Like it's not very creamy at all. It's not a read, it's just like, it feels like it gripped on really, really tight. And it's just so dark, like it absorbs light so much because it's matte. I don't mind it. It's just a lot. <sighs> Y'all know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go in with that lip liner that I really liked and I'm gonna go in with one of my lip glosses. So that lip liner is a huge winner, huge, huge winner. Like it's just so close to my lip color and it's not outrageously creamy, it's not going anywhere. I feel like it is truly like a lip liner that would protect you from feathering. Haute Coco and Cafe Noisette. It's Cafe Noisette. <laughs> this is like just the easiest shade. Oh, and it smells like hazelnut coffee. And suddenly my lips don't look so unhealthy. Good grief, Prada. I mean, they were already in bad shape, but like a lip balm should have helped. Of course now my lips are all red, but whatever. <sighs> I mean, what's going to work better than something I created specifically for what I wanted it to be, right? Let's give this a spritz. Okay. I think I'm ready to give y'all some 
final and maybe preliminary final thoughts on these products, depending on how long I've been using them before I got on camera today. So starting with the foundation, the Bear Pro, I think that it's just as good as the old Bear Pro. I like it. I definitely think that for people with my skin type, very dry, you can get away with it. And I would recommend using a, a good bit of skin prep. You know what I mean? Just make sure that you give your skin the chance to get moisturized and nice and hydrated before you put this on, but it's not going to go full, like long wear paper matte, that like non-transferring texture that sometimes, you know, a matte foundation goes down to, but it's more just about the perfecting quality of it. And I think it is very perfecting. It's very, very pretty. The one thing that I would keep in mind here is like I said, because of the zinc oxide in this, when you swatch it, I don't know, ask them for a sample or something because it's like, go a shade deeper than you think you need because as it spreads out, y'all watched it happen. It lightens because of the zinc oxide in it. And so the shade that looks like it's going to work might completely ghost you out when it's applied to the whole face. That would be my one reservation, but I really like it because it's not full coverage. I would call it a medium coverage, like a solid medium coverage. It's just nice to interact with the Bare Minerals product again. And I'm just like, okay, I like that. Like it feels like I can believe in them again because it was just, they were putting out some stuff there for a while where I was like, what are we doing y'all? I'm gonna go ahead and say in the wide world of concealers that blow my mind, the Fenty is just not it. And that's because I really feel like it's just not made for my skin type. The eavesdrop stick, made for my skin type. It's so good. It's so good. It's so hydrating. It's balmy. It's gorgeous, but it's long wearing. But like, Previous to that, most of the Fenty complexion products were much too mattifying and meant for oily skin than I could ever wear. And I feel like this is just something that you should go to a combo to oily skinned influencer for a real review on because my review is that it's not made for me. It just kind of dries out my under eyes. It's not as much coverage as I would want. I think it's supposed to be low key and easy, but for me, it's not doing enough of the heavy lifting to be something that I feel prettier in for wearing it. I'd much rather use the Givenchy, the Tower 28, the Kosas, even the new Laura Mercier. I like better than this. It's just, it's just not it for me. Armani has also kind of lost the plot here. I think even if you only used this as a highlighter, this product is up against so many products that kind of aim to do this that are better than this. The Ilia one is fantastic. The Chanel Drage obviously is incredible. Even, I mean, it's not my favorite, but like the super loaded highlighters in the compact from Westman Atelier, or honestly for what this, I actually bought this to do, the Surratt little sponge tip, little liquid blush things, they're light years better than this. It like resolves your makeup up too much and like breaks it back up. And I feel like for that reason, like I just can't recommend it because it's like the few times that I've used it, it has not been user-friendly at all. It's been really difficult to use. And there are so many, like I said, products out there that no matter what you were trying to use this for, there are things that do a better job of it. I would just skip this. Prada, don't buy this. <sighs> it's really pretty but it's also super perfumey. And the thing that bugs me about it the most is that it's not a very good lip balm. If it was just a kick-ass lip balm, I'd be all in. I'd be like, sure, spend the money, tolerate the scent, whatever. If you're like a luxury person, there are plenty of people out there who are probably like, why would you buy something from a luxury company and not expect there to be a fragrance? That's on me. Like the fragrance is not the largest problem in my eyes, the, the largest problem is the fact that it's not a good lip balm. It did like makes my lips worse. So yeah, I don't recommend this. I recommend the Gucci in the little pot. If you're looking for something that has that amazing luxury appeal and tactile quality of when you're using it, there's just something about it that just feels so luxurious every single time I interact with it. I love it. Even if it's not like the most high quality lip balm in the world, it gets the job done and I just like it owning it. If you're looking for something that's like this and absolutely gorgeous and like actually helps your lips and looks beautiful the whole time while it's happening, oh, I sell candy glaze. I can't recommend it enough. The Make Beauty eyeshadows, okay? I think that these are quite lovely. I think that they're exciting for what they are, but it's like if one of these colors doesn't totally blow your, it's just like any eyeshadow single, right? If one of the colors doesn't completely blow your mind, then, you know, you can kind of pass on the release because they're meant to be one and done. I feel like they're meant to be kind of the star of the show. Otherwise they would have come out with a palette of them. So I did try and slam as many of them on my eyes as I could today. And I'm not sure that that was necessary. Like it was mainly just to show what they were capable of, but I don't think that that's necessarily their intention. They want you to probably have like one or two and you know, use them to be the center of a look. I just want y'all to know what the formula is like. The formula is not as 
as inconsistent and flaky as it looks like it's going to be. That is very much an aesthetic kind of spray over, which doesn't really bother me because the texture of the product that's underneath there is actually more my preference. It's just a very satisfying foil that has a lot of tenacity to it and wears a long time on me. This is really just a consistent metallic. I don't really think that they're multi-chrome. <laughs> but that doesn't make them bad. As far as the hourglass lips are concerned, I definitely think that the matte lips are extraordinarily matte. If you're afraid that it's going to be too matte for you, it might be. And honestly, the emerging star from that box, totally unexpected, is the lip liner in Exposed because it's my exact lip color. So if you are looking at this and you're like, that's my exact lip color too. Like this is the ultimate lip cheat. And I know that's extraordinarily specific because not everybody looks like me, but I did just stumble upon this and I need to share. Anywho, y'all, I'm out of words. I'm out of words. I've made myself hoarse from talking, but I hope that this was enjoyable for y'all. If it was, please do give the video a thumbs up. If you're new here, cool people subscribe. You should subscribe if you're cool. It'd be cool if you did. And I'll put a video up here that I think that you will enjoy if you liked this one. I love y'all very much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.